What's going on guys? We are Tottenham TV here. Spurs have beaten Aston Villa by two goals to one at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in what was a very good reaction, positive reaction to the North London Derby defeat last week. Spurs back to winning ways, back up to eighth place yeah. and it was a very positive performance all round, Josh, wasn't it? It was a positive performance. I mean, we didn't kill the game off. Harry Kane had a chance at the end. The Salsa had a chance to square to Harry Kane at the end. Sonny had chances. If we were finishing... Our chances, we would have won that probably by four or three goals. Uh, we would have won 3-1 or 4-1. But we got the job done. There were some nervy moments. Emerson uh, with the 2-1 uh, getting caught out. And Watkins, uh, you know, outpacing um, Eric Dyer. Mm -hmm. But in on the whole, Aston Villa didn't threaten and have that many clear-cut chances. And I'm proud of the way we defended. The Emerson's performance down the flanks. Sonny was unbelievable. Lucas was good. Um, Lo Celso came on, like I said, should have scored, but did a job. And Harry Kane was a Harry Kane, you know, he wasn't that involved uh, in terms of number of touches, but he did create a, a great opportunity for Lo Celso with an exquisite back heel. Yeah. When you watch it, this back heel from Kane was unbelievable. And then he could have scored in the final minutes to make it 3-1. So good to see that we haven't let a lead slip, even though we went from 1-0 up to 1-0. Great to see that we've seen out the game and great to go above West Ham as well at the, in the final minutes. And two points of fourth, not that bad. I'll take that seven games of the season. Two points. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's all of a sudden after one win, it all doesn't seem as bad as everyone makes out to be. But look, we started the game a bit sloppily. I think first 10 minutes or so, like Villa were coming on really strong and yeah. they were being very, very aggressive. And you're yeah. thinking, you know, is this going to be another long day uh, yeah. for Spurs? Is this yeah. going to be a poor reaction? Yeah. And then we grew yeah. into the game. I think for the, the, you know, for the following 25, half an hour or so, yeah. Spurs really got a foothold. And despite in the, in the first half, um, really having a bit more control, yeah. weren't creating too many chances, had a few chances in the transitions, and obviously we got that goal, really lovely goal by Hoybier. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to say that, lovely link yeah. up between him and Son. Brilliant. Brilliant. Son lays off to Hoybier, Hoybier slots it into the far Perfect. corner, passes it into the far Strokes corner on the, on the edge of the yeah. box, and we, we're in the ascendancy, but you have to say in the second half, um, for the first 15 minutes or so, very even, uh, yeah. Villa were very much coming coming back into it, the Spurs were looking dangerous on the counter. Yeah. And then it was kind of, we were on top, we missed a host of chances. Yeah. Host of chances, yeah. which uh, which we could have put it 2-0 yeah. before yeah. we even had a before, host of chances yeah. Yeah. to make Sonny. it 3-1. Yeah. I'm saying a 1-0, Sonny had a chance. Yeah. Um, and Dombele made it force Martinez yeah. into a save. Emerson was yeah. causing havoc down the right-hand yeah. side. Yeah. And so we were disappointed not to be 2 up. And then they equalised, which yeah. I have to say Romero, however good he played today, he had a yeah. brilliant game. Poor tackle. It was what it was because Romero... Yeah. That's how he defends. So yeah. aggressive. Yeah. Likes to place. anticipate. Yeah. Yeah. But that's one of the points where he got unstuck, wasn't it, for the yeah. goal? Well, look, no player's perfect. And I'd rather have an aggressive Romero than a, a conservative, you know, wait for the player. Um, the amount of times Romero made a tackle where he won the ball first time, um, we have to look at that side of it as well because he does anticipate really well. Um, he makes an error for that second goal. Uh, it would have been a yellow card. I don't he know got a yellow card. He got a yellow, yellow card, card. yeah. Referee allowed it to play. I thought the ref play, played the game on pretty well today. He played advantage quite a few times. And I think Emerson was caught in two, two positions because he, he didn't know where to stay central or go out wide. Unfortunately, he got caught between the two. Not sure how much you can blame him for that, but always you should go and take your man first. He didn't. The cross came in from, from Matt Target, wasn't it? Yeah. Who, who? And it was a beautiful cross. I mean, yes, Sonny's cross for the second goal was amazing. But so was Target's cross. It was right between Lloris and Dyer. Perfect. He had the pace and the whip, and all Watkins had to do was get a toe on it, which he did, and it was one all. Um, and we struggled to contain that Target all game, to be fair. Well, he had a lot of joy down yeah. the left-hand side due to the you know wing-back system they played. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, a one all, yeah. uh, with the circumstances we were facing, with, you know, a poor performance, that on the back of some poor performances, and also all the chances we'd missed, it would be yeah. very easy for Tottenham to feel sorry for themselves yeah, and drop. get down and head drop one or But yeah. instant reaction. Yeah. As soon as we conceded, yeah. we went back on the front foot. We yeah. we continued to create chances. Yeah. And pretty much almost immediately, it must have been less than three or four minutes after yeah. conceding, yeah. we're back in the lead. Back in the lead. Son with an excellent dribble. Yeah. Um, yeah. Takes on House. So, say, uh, um, sold House down the river sold with, a, with a dribble totally. on the left-hand right. side. Later. Exactly. He yeah. didn't have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely ball across the face of goal, and there's yeah. Lucas to yeah. tap it home in the back post. Yeah. And that was what I really enjoyed about yeah, that. It was a transitional um, counter attacking move. Um, if you think about um, the Villa uh, performance, it wasn't great. I don't think Villa did themselves any 
major justice today. I don't think they were great by the first 10 minutes. They were knocking it around, playing football, and then they started going long balls. And, you know, they became very predictable, Villa, with their long mm. balls, or looking for Matty Target on the left, or looking for Cash on the right. Once we had worked out what the Villa were trying to do, whether it was Pierre or uh, Skip covering the flanks. Another great game for Skip, yeah, by the way. A Skip was a great game. We worked it out and they ran out of ideas. They couldn't open us up too many times down the middle. They were going down the sides. The only time really was, yeah, as you say, yeah. through Cash or Target. Through cash getting, or target. Getting, that getting. was their game plan. Down mm. the wings. And they had seven or eight corners, maybe nine corners. We got lucky with some of that pinballing stuff going around in the second half. There were moments when you had your heart you know, in your mouth and you're thinking, right, where's this ball going to end up? But we, we rode our luck at times, but we also created our own luck by Dyer breaking a last minute tackle, by Lucas getting involved. The players were on the front foot. They were at it. They didn't wait. They didn't, you know, like you say, they didn't drop their heads after 1-0. And I think that positive is more, is just as big as a result that we didn't let our heads drop at one all. Villa did come strong after the second goal. There's another couple of chances mm -hmm. down the right. And he thought, right, here we go. Heads are going to drop. We did. And like you said, most importantly, Son down the wing, sells him a McDonald's, puts it across the box. And Lucas Mora, 10 out of 10 mm -hmm. for making that run. Always you make the run at the back post because you never know when it's going to come. And today it paid off. And you've got to say as well, you know, once we went down to 2-1, once we went up 2-1, sorry, that was about, what, this, uh, I don't know when it was, uh, 70... S 70, uh, 70 or 70, 70 odd, odd minutes, yeah. for those last 20 minutes we didn't 71. they've given it actually a Matt Target own goal I thought it was a Lucas goal but 71 minutes yeah um, they actually the only team who looked closest to scoring another goal was Spurs that's Tottenham, yeah. was Bre that, and that's what I really like to see for those last 20 minutes we were creating chance after chance after chance and the, as I say the only disappointment in those last 20 minutes is we game. didn't get the third no, because um, Le Celso had a massive opportunity Huge. to make it 3-1 he Huge. decides to try and pass it to he's only scored one goal for Spurs. he has to slot that home Le Celso he's Look, got to slot that home. I don't want to rag on him because actually for his cameo was pretty decent but, but he has to slot that home but do you know what it is Sim we created chances now one of the problems we've had this season is creating chances we mm -hmm. probably created more chances in that game than we have done in the Arsenal and Chelsea game yeah so well Chelsea first half we had a good first half but if you look at the two halves of Chelsea and Arsenal just in that in that 190 minutes you know the second half especially we had three chances in the second half mm -hmm. you know when you look at the Kane chance you look at the Celso and you look at Son and obviously you look at the goal so the fact we're creating chances down the wings we look dynamic. Sometimes I saw Sun on the right and I saw Moore on the left. I saw Kane, you know, floating around in midfield. I saw Tangai up top. We looked more unpredictable, more dynamic. Yeah. And that's what that top four, that quartet in front of Pierre and Skip, they just need to, you know how Liverpool do it and you see the, 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 the more on four te informed mm. teams, they mix it up. We need to mix it up. We become too predictable and we just keep going with the same pattern. So today was good to see Son and um, Lucas just pop up in different positions. Harry Kane had a better second half than the first half. And um, I think Villa got away with it at 2-1. It should have been 3-1. Yeah, it should, it should have been 3-1. You know, Kane had a um, guilt-edge chance as well. He was one-on-one, yeah. -on -one, good movement from him. Yeah. Uh, but, sh sh you know, he should have finished that, made, made that 3-1. Yeah. Sonny, though, I must say, look, let's talk about some individual performances. Let's talk about him yeah. and Son because yeah. I thought throughout the whole... Pretty much, you know, yep. in, our, in the first half, he was our brightest attacker. Yep. And then, obviously, he got an assist as well for Hoybier. But in the yep. second half, yep. I thought he was absolutely outstanding. I thought he was easily, yep. bar none, our, our best player. He, he was. was creating so yeah. much whenever he was getting the ball. He was, he was, um, yeah. They couldn't contain him. His pace, his trickery, yep. his dribbling ability. Yep. He didn't quite have his shooting boots on today, I no. would say that. No. But... He got two assists. He was he was causing havoc left, right, and centre yep. for Aston Villa. They didn't know what to do with him whenever he picked up the ball, yep. and he was dribbling in tight spaces. And it all like some it summed up his performance right at the end there, where he's he's at the corner flag. He dribbles past three players to get into the box. Yep. Then dribbles past another three players yep. to get back out of the box. Yeah, they and couldn't, they couldn't get it off him. Couldn't, they couldn't get the ball off him. They couldn't deal with his tricky feet. They couldn't deal with his um his pace and his running in behind. And he actually had some good passes as well. He actually had some good passes in and around that final third. The thing with Sonny is, um, you know, if you go too close to him, he skims you. And obviously, if you give him space, he takes you on. Um, so it's a very, he's very difficult to play against. And that's why Son is one of the best players in the Premier League. In a team that hasn't been playing well, he can himself get the ball and make things happen. And he's done that today. And, you know, we had on target shots was um, eight on target. I think Sonny would be half of them. I don't know. I'd have to. I'd have to watch the game back and count. But I'm sure, three or four shots 
was Sonny. He had that one in the first half, which it just went past the keeper, yeah. which normally sees Son bang them in. He had the one on one, which went into the keeper's legs. And, um, you know, he was a constant threat. But I have to give props to um, Lucas Moura in the way in the first half, having tight spaces within the first 10 minutes, 15 minutes. You know, Villa was strong, they were controlling it, but then Moura started getting more involved in the second half of the first half. You know, he was picking little balls here or there. So Lucas Moura deserves um, credit for his performance today. Um, Tangi was the one guy that probably didn't grow into the game, but the rest of the team grew into the game. And that's always good to see because, you know, you're always going to get the first 15, 20 minutes. You just don't know what Tottenham you've got. Yeah. You don't even know what Villa you've got. You know, is it a Villa that's, you know, up for it? But today we grew into the game and, and um, Villa couldn't deal with us, you know. But, and, um, and I want to talk about the two new boys, Emerson and Romero. Let's Emerson. talk about Emerson first because I thought this was the first match we really saw what Emerson can do yep. in the Spurs shirt. And yep. I think a lot of question marks have been over him in his early the early games that he's yep. had. Yep. And I thought, despite the fact, yeah, Matt Target had a lot of joy down that side because of the formation Villa were playing, yep. it was difficult for him to know when to push out to him, when to stay in the centre, whatever. I thought, first of all, he dealt with the situation fairly well defensively. And I also think um, attacking-wise, um, he, he was bombing on. And yeah. he showed exactly why he's probably more effective in that position than Tanganga because he's just so much more comfortable on the ball. He yeah. had a lot more quality in the final third. He had a lot of energy as well, bombing on yeah. in the 80th minute. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. And I was very, very impressed with Emerson. Had a really yeah. strong performance and I'm happy for him. His, his first pass is better. His anticipation is better than Tanganga. So he, he'll, he'll pass and move and he's more athletic as well. Um, he's not as strong as Tanganga and he's not as probably strong defensively. Uh, and the question mark's still out on his defensive um, qualities, um, Emerson. Um, what we want is obviously we want a defensive uh, right back that can attack. That's what we want. You know, the best of both. That's that's what we are trying to get to with with, with our right backs and our left backs. Um, I'm still wary of Emerson's defensive abilities um, versus Tanganga, but attacking wise and pass and move wise, then I felt like Emerson today had a better game. Mm. Um, but up against better opposition against Zaha, we saw that Emerson struggled. But who wouldn't struggle against mm. Saha? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Most right backs would struggle against Saha. So, yeah, good game, man. And um, I was I happy think, for I him. Think, I think I think as long as we keep developing him, and he keeps getting a taste of Premier League action every weekend, then hopefully he'll get the confidence and build his body and his strength, um, and keep that position, you know, for the long run. But no, we've got I'm happy family. for him because you know a lot of people were criticizing him, but he came back strong today with a good performance and showed what he can do in a Spurs shirt. But let's talk about Romero yep. as well. Another, another player making his, I believe, second start in the Premier League, Chelsea in today. Yeah, Chelsea in today. Um, and I thought again, um, despite he had that moment in the second half where obviously he made the foul, we and then obviously because he made the foul, we he he got caught out of position, yep. and that led to the goal. Yep. I thought by and large another bri a brilliant display from him, showing yep. what he can bring to our back line with his aggression, his anticipation, yep. and he was um, forming a decent partnership with Dyer as well. And not only that, he's so calm on the ball. He had calm. had a lot of composure, doesn't panic, no. even in situations where. The ball's flying in. He's able to like cushion up a, a clearance into into a Tottenham yep. player. Yep. And I thought another player who just needs we need to keep playing him. Absolutely. He needs more and more game yep. time. And another impressive display from him as well in, that, he, in most of the he, game. Dyer and um, Romero need to be um, it's Newcastle next, and then I think we've got Everton United or whichever way order it is. You've got to now allow those two to form a central defensive partnership and just give them time now to develop that, like Jan and Toby, Toby developed. Um, Romero today was positionally very good. You know, whenever there was a, a, a ball loose in the box, Romero was there. There was that one time when Skip uh, overhead kicked it, clearance, yeah. you know, and that was Skip helping out uh, Romero out of position. But generally, Romero was in the right place, calm headers, whether it's a clearance up the field, whether it's a pass out. There was times when we were under pressure and Romero was passing it out. This is where Dyer goes for the long ball because he's not as good passer as Romero. Romero has that calm, passing, control ability and he has that aggressiveness to get in front of you. What we need Romero to do now is come on and be a leader into the next five, six, seven games to like lead that back line. Maybe his aerial ability, he can start getting more involved aerially because I don't know how tall he is. I don't think he's as tall as Eric Dyer. Mm -hmm. And just keeping that calmness at the back that when there is a bit of pinball going on, everyone's in position. I want to see leadership from Romero because the problem is we don't really have enough 
leaders at the back. Uh, you know, Emerson's too new. Regulon's not a leader. Um, so Emerson and Dyer need to to, to get that um, that position tied up. Hopefully, Nuno mm. doesn't change it. I couldn't stand Jose changing it changing it last season. Um, I don't know if any other clubs change their centre backs as much as Tottenham. <laughs> Probably not. Um, so hopefully they're here to stay, mate, and, and Nuno can give them a run in the team now. Yeah. And finally, um, I want to talk about uh, Oli Skip as well yep. and Hoybier together. I think yep. they're both brilliant. 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 But it showed today how important Oli Skip is Absolutely. to this team because Absolutely. without him, there really is a lack of bite and fight in that centre. Nuno, and we didn't no. get bullied. That was no. the most important no. thing. He was always there no. making challenges, yep. making blocks, yep. pulling people into position, yep. uh, making sure people are in their right position. Yep. He really um, played off Hoybier really well. Yep. They were good foil for each other. Yep. And also it allowed Hoybier a bit more freedom to go forward and obviously yep. got the goal and yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought he was more aggressive here. Yeah. Not only does it allow him um, more um, freedom to go forward, but also press forward. Yeah. It allows him to push forward yeah. for a press and He's win the ball high yeah. because he knows someone's going to be there. He's got, he's got his Without, it, I was going to say about Skip, um, he's tidy, he's neat, he's not extravagant, he's not going to do step overs and through balls, but he's just neat and tidy and, and, and he cleans up. And we need that because, like you just said, when Pierre pushes forward, but Partnerships are so important in any successful team, whether it's down the wings, whether it's Pierre and Skip, whether it's Roden, uh, sorry, uh, Romero and, and Dyer or whichever partnership it is. We need to develop partnerships. I don't feel we've got enough partnerships. Hung Min Son and Kane, that partnership carried us through games last season, just from pure, you know, passing and finishing. But we need more partnerships and that Pierre and Skip partnership is a partnership we don't want to break anymore now. So leave mm. them to it. They're so good at just policing that back four and filling in and dropping back and then attacking when the opportunity presents itself, which is exactly what Pierre did today. Yeah. Dyer and Romero, let them develop a partnership. Emerson and um, Mora, let them develop a partnership. Son and Reggie, it's all about partnerships. And today I saw many partnerships and that's I was really proud of of what I saw today with Skip and Hoybier, man. Definitely. Yeah, Skip's very super helpful. important. He almost makes Hoybier a better player mm -hmm. and Hoybier makes him a better player and they make the team better when they play together. It's mm. brilliant. I love that. Love that, Josh. Um, so, yeah, look, great win. Um, stays up. Look, people, a lot of... Luno needed a big performance today from Spurs and, uh, you know, going into the international break, a lot of people saying if he doesn't win today uh, or he didn't get a good result then he could, it was possible he wouldn't see the end of the international break. I think after a performance like that, I think it show, doesn't show we're on the right track, but it shows what he can do, what kind of performance he can build. And I think the pressing was on point today. Yep. We looked very aggressive. They looked, It didn't look like a team who weren't playing for the manager no, today. I was just about to say that, yeah. And that was the most positive thing. Yep. So I'm very happy They're for Nuno, for he got that. He came under, so, look, I couldn't even, but look, I understand we have three defeats in a row, but the amount of criticism he was coming under was a lot of them, I think, was yep. unfair. A lot of unfair criticism for the manager. A lot of um, early judgments, people saying, get rid, he's after six games, we've seen what he can do and we should cut ties with him already. I thought that was so but, unfair but because you need more time than that. When and I think today the showed of that. the stats table for chances created, XG, um, you know, fewest shots, things, yeah. you know, fewest running and tracking, you know, fewest goals, most conceded. I understand fans getting on Nuno's back for that. Secondly, when you pick the wrong players, not skip against, not picking skip against Arsenal. Today, he didn't pick Ali, right? So a lot mm. of fans will see improvement in Nuno because a lot of people have feel like Deli Ali doesn't deserve to be in the team. Today, he um, put skip back in. Even in the second half against Arsenal, he put skip back in. So there is a learning curve. Pochettino, in his first six games, only won two or three. There was a couple of draws and there's a couple of losses. We lost to Stoke at home. No, so we lost to West Brom, remember we that? We lost yeah. to West Brom 1-0. Yeah. Uh, we lost to Newcastle at home, you know, in the first seven games, eight games. We look Barely at having a shot, like we were terrible. We were terrible. Pochettino was playing around. You know, Dyer scored that winner against West Ham in his first game. We could have drawn that too. So the first six, seven games, you should never judge any manager too much. However, because we've been at the bottom of all the stats and Sky Sports don't help, when they put out those stats, we're talking yeah, about yeah. the bottom of 18th and 19th. Then the form guide, the form table's going down, yeah. you know, it's just red, red, red. You can't blame fans for getting on his back because we're Tottenham Hotspur Football Club mm -hmm. and we're not Crystal Palace. So I can understand them getting on his back, but today he put Skip back in, he picked the right team, but more importantly, like you said, mate, you could pick a right team, you could pick a right system. Are the players playing for you, for the badge, for the fans? Yes, yes, yes. Today the players went out there, bar the first 10 minutes, but I think they just wanted to get a feel of the game. 
they actually put pressure on the opposition with pressing, with aggression. And even when we went one all, we continued with the same philosophy of pressing and even trying. Even at 2-1 when we're winning, even we didn't sit back. Yeah, we didn't sit back. We didn't do that usual sit back stuff that we've seen over the last 12 mm. months. So a lot of credit to the players, to Nuno and the club. However, it is only one result. We've got Newcastle, we've got Everton, we've got United. West Ham up a couple West of you just lost to we Brentford. can't judge Nuno until we've had at least half a season. Yeah. You know, it takes but time. yeah, my only point with Nuno is yes, he's got things wrong and yes, we're not playing well, but you've got to give him a chance to get it right. To get it right. You could have got to give him that opportunity. Otherwise, Do you know the if you're not going to give him that opportunity, There's what's the point? They're poor errors. So not starting to give him Arsenal. Yeah. I, honestly, 80% of the fan base must have looked at that li- lineup against Arsenal and said, "What the? He- where's Skip? That's the first thing I put on Twitter is, where's Skip? So there ha- have been basic errors from Nuno. It's not like there have been errors where you think, okay, you know, you've been up against some of the best managers in the world. There have been some basic errors. So he hasn't done himself yeah. favours. But today you got it right. And, um, but you've got to give him, I'm saying, you've got to give him an opportunity to, to learn get it right. from his mistakes. Otherwise, to, you yeah. can't just say he's done this wrong, no, so get rid. No, no, he's no, done no, this no, wrong. No, if he can't no, get it no. right, then you get rid. But if but he t- now goes and, and pulls Skip out and, and, and goes and. Yeah, obviously, I'll be bad, but we'll see. You think, what, what's he smoking? Do you know what I mean? But hopefully, he's got it right now and the template's set for him to move forward with. All right, Josh, lovely to have you on the watch long. It's been an absolute Thanks pleasure. We'll be on, staying on for the fan show. Yeah, we'll stay, we'll stay on for the fan show. We've got the fan show coming up later, so stay tuned for that. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for the watch long. Thank you for all the likes, subscri- um, the um, subscriptions, the chats, everyone commenting. If you haven't already, go scroll down and smash that like button. It really does help us support the channel. Let's get to a 1,000 likes um, before the end of the stream, but we got to go. Uh, we're going to join us for the fan show in about five minutes' time. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Great win for Tottenham. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come Come on you Spurs. Spurs.